Hi, I'm Rosalind Picard. I'm a professor at MIT, and I work in the Media Lab where I direct our research in affective computing. Affective computing started here in the Media Lab. I originally defined it as computing that relates to, arises from, or deliberately influences emotion. In the beginning, it was seen as a kind of a crazy idea, but today it's in use by more than a quarter of the Fortune Global 500 companies. Affective computing today is inside robots, voice assistants, automobiles, uh, smartphones, and all kinds of technology that we interact with daily. The focuses of our affective computing research range across a broad set of areas. The technology enables us to do things like see if a user of technology is interested, bored, confused, frustrated, and not just on their face, but we can, if they choose, and all of our work uh, involves opting in and fully informed consent, uh, we can also listen to tone of voice. We can look at sentiment analysis of what is typed online and help you see, for example, if your media diet is full of negativity or full of more positive, uh, joyful, uh, happy, and engaging stimuli. The technology lets us do things like improve the safety of a driver's experience, recognizing things like where their attention is going and when they might need additional support. Over the years, there have been a lot of surprises in our work as well. For example, with the collaboration across the Media Lab, we pioneered some of the first wearable technology. And my group's focus was on the physiology that relates to emotion. Things like stress that influences how all of our organs function and engagement that also influences our mental health and our social interaction. With understanding that physiology and wearables, we've had a lot of surprises such as uh, seeing physical health changes like neurological changes that relate to a seizure and behavioral changes that relate to mental health. As a child, I was not interested in emotion. Even as a young researcher, I thought it was something we should stay away from. But reflecting back, I realized that I was raised in a family with great emotional intelligence. My parents, who adopted my brother and me, for example, helped us have the courage to see when expectations were set very low and to defy those. Uh, in high school, as, as a young girl, I was told that if I ever wanted to work, I should learn to type, take the typing class, because then if I wanted a job, I could become a secretary. Well, I did take the typing class. I became a very fast typer, and I later was able to use that to create computer programs, author the book Affective Computing, and today my group and I have published hundreds of peer-reviewed scientific publications. I learned then, and continue to learn now in the Media Lab, that you don't have to be restricted by the uh, training that you have. I'm trained in electrical engineering and computer science, um, but today I partner with doctors, with lawyers, with philosophers, with people who have really hard problems to solve and don't know how to solve them. But those problems intersect with human emotion and technology. And when we bring together all of our kinds of expertise, uh, we can defy the expectations of those around us and come up with creative new solutions that really help address these important human problems.